everybody. Thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. Tonight, we're joined by two-time World Series champion, seven-time Cy Young Award winner, The Rocket himself, Roger Clemens. Roger, so excited to have you on The View. Um, I just have to jump in with this one because you recently went to a Trump rally in Texas. First of all, how was it? Secondly, had you been to a Trump rally? Was it more or less than you expected? Tell me about your experience. Man, it was it was an experience. It was a, a good little bucket list check off if you <laughs> yeah. want to get to a few of the rallies. And then once I found out President Trump was coming really to our backyard, I'm in Houston right now. I still, shoot, I probably live eight, nine miles from my high school where Deb and I went to high wow. school. And uh, our lake house is an hour north, Montgomery County. You're not going to find any bigger... Uh, Trump fans in the, in the in the entire nation than Montgomery County, and uh, man, I think we turned away probably, and kind of like the private um, uh, deal, we probably turned away a couple hundred people. The rally, I heard they had to turn away almost ten thousand. I mean, yeah. and I think there was fifteen or eighteen there. So in the fairgrounds, you could, as far as you could see back, the ones that weren't let in, they were out there listening on the the big speakers, um, and knowing. Uh, President Trump, like I know him and you know him, um, man, I thought I had a lot of energy. I mean, this oh man, this man showed up in Houston at like 8 a.m., did a couple uh, uh, events then, had a nice big uh, lunch downtown, got in the motorcade, busted it up to us for a little private thing at the Bentwater Country Club, and then busted over with him in the uh, 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 with the big uh, parade uh, to uh, the fairgrounds there in Montgomery. And man, he hit every note. He uh, introduced uh, all the lieutenant governors that were there, um, uh, the mayor, uh, the governor. Everybody was there. Uh, my pillow man, Mike, was there, of course. <laughs> Mike he, Lindell, he, yeah. Yeah, he never he never misses. Uh, he was great. I mean, what a what a what a story he has. But yeah. uh, uh, I can only tell you again. I'm preaching to the choir, and probably a lot of your 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 viewers. But um, you know, when I was a New York Yankee, I had a charity event out the one of the uh, Trump courses and President Trump before he was president was going to come out for about 20 minutes and just say hello and and be present and he must have stayed shoot it was unbelievable he probably stayed two hours yeah visiting with everybody and you, you know the drill he he goes above and beyond uh that's what I appreciate about him and uh, y'all's family um it, there's there's nothing like it like I said you guys don't need to be doing what you're doing but you do it for us as Americans, and when you say you're all in, you're all in. And the yeah. other thing that we talked about when I was at a round table, uh, I told the president, and uh, everybody was listening, they were waiting to hear my question, of course. Uh, I basically just made a statement. I, I love the team concept. I love it that when he's in office, um, he has a great team around him. And if you're not on board, you're out. And right. uh, you, guys are, you guys are pretty good judge at, uh, a, a character and, and how, how people can get things done. And uh, so I like that aspect being, you know, playing 24 years in the major leagues and the clock kind of runs your schedule, if you will, and, and everything that we know about it. So long answer longer. It was awesome. It was a great rally. Uh, he was fired up. The weather was just perfect. It was a little cool, but it was great. And uh, we, we had a blast doing it. I love it. Well, that's, I mean, it's so cool. Really, it is a bucket list item for people that have not been to a Trump rally. I, I mean, I can't even tell you how many I've been to. They are all better than the last. They are all exciting. It's incredible. And by the way, what you're talking about, Roger, with the fact that there were like 10,000 possibly more people that could not get into the stadium outside, nobody talks about that. The media doesn't want to cover that because they know Joe Biden couldn't even get the 10,000 people that were out that couldn't get into the stadium in, they for some reason don't want to show you the popularity of Donald Trump still to this day, even though he is not president right now. He is technically not running for any office right now. Um, it's rather incredible. I'm so glad you got to have that experience. Um, hopefully there will be more of that to come. Um, but what was- I'm people, telling you, there were, there were more than you could see behind the cameras Amazing. that they couldn't even see. They were out there listening in the dark. And you're right. I don't think uh, even in the last year and a half, uh, I brought it to the tent, everybody's attention. How many Build Back Better hats have you seen? 
Not, oh. not too many. Not too many, if, if any. We haven't seen too many of those. No, I, I'm. If you see one, <laughs> let us know. I would love to know about that. Um, but having known Donald Trump prior to politics, you, I mean, you just told the story, obviously, about him coming out to to this event. And he has always been that that guy. He's been very generous with his time. He always has. He still is to this day, um, even, at, you know, as when he was president, former president, whatever. Um, but I feel like you really nailed it when you talked about the, the team. Like, you have to be a team player. None of this nonsense, by the way, Roger, about putting people in a certain position because of the way they look, because of their gender, because of any of that. People need to earn their position. That, I mean, that's the only way, as far as I'm concerned, that it should work. I've played sports my whole life. As someone who, whose life is all about sports, I'm sure you can attest to the fact that you are not going to get a position on an MLB team because they have to meet a quota, because you happen to look a certain way or whatever. It's about whether or not you can get the job done. And by the way, that's how Donald Trump has always operated his businesses. You go to the Trump Organization, you see people from all different walks of life, people that did not have the same pedigree. Maybe they didn't go to an Ivy League institution. Maybe they didn't even go to college. A lot of the, the people that have the highest positions in the Trump Organization right now started out as doormen, as drivers, as security guards. But Donald Trump saw something in them. They were getting the job done and he promoted them. But it should all be about what you bring to the table. What do you make of, of the fact that um, there are so many things happening in our country right now, especially where people just, it, it doesn't even matter as to whether or not they can do the job. They, they're just given positions. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. And as a woman, I want to earn everything I get because I want you to know I'm better than you, even though I am a woman and not because I'm a woman, I got the job. Yeah. So I'll, I'll regress a little bit, just like you said, whether it's a doorman or one of the drivers anybody like that they get it so and they yeah. understand they know how to they know what's important and uh, uh, you know pick your time to have fun and when it's time to go to work and that and that's the biggest thing my grandmother I was my pops my dad died when I was nine years old I was raised by two strong-willed women my mother and my grandmother and that's all you need to know my mom worked three jobs so I could have a wow. sweet red glove and uh, she raised six of us when when she passed I was born in Dayton when she passed my oldest brother got stationed at Fort Hood and uh, and went to Vietnam, and that's how we ended up in Texas when I was young. Had five uncles that served. Uh, so anytime I get a chance to thank, like I did at uh, President Trump's rally, to thank our military and our service officers, um, I, I do so. But my grandmother told me, hey, if you're a ditch digger, be the best ditch digger in the yes, country. Yes, absolutely. And, and that's what it's all about. So people, you know, when they, they see me out there on the mound with that stare behind my glove doing my work, I tell people that's what I did uh, you know, over 24 years. It's not who I am as a person. You know, I love my foundation. We help at-risk kids. I do that behind the scenes. Uh, I have a lot of great people at my office that 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 uh, that help push me out there and get those things done. And uh, but yeah, I mean, like I said, um, uh, I love it uh, that you know President Trump. We all know is a businessman. I like it when he holds right. other countries' feet to the fire and pay their portion. Because we're always helping so many people out. And oh, by the way, you know, America sucks, right? But everybody's trying to get in this place. Exactly. And uh, so, uh, you know, and, and of course, what we, we've got going on down here, you know, I would appreciate it if the current president or vice president would, would actually come oh. just once, let alone two or three times to look at our border. And that be something? See the... See the millions and millions of dollars. We're down there. We have a lease down that way, uh, about 20 minutes north of Laredo. And we, But when we went down by the border and you see the see the uh, security cameras and the wasted fencing, this laying there. Oh, it's so sad. Yeah, put up. It's a, it's a mess. We, you guys harp, you know, and talked about it uh, so many times, but um, I feel the same way. I mean, like I said, I love being American. The coolest thing that I ever got to do, Laura, was... Um, I was, for your viewers, I was a New York Yankee. I was supposed to pitch the night of 9-11. That was my start that wow. night. I woke up that morning. Our world changed as we know it. I was going for my 20th win against one of my former clubs, the Boston Red Sox. So it was a big rivalry game. And uh, all hell broke loose. And we know what happened. But what came of that, my agents went to high school with General Myers. 
And General Myers called me and asked me to go to the Middle East to see our men and women. And we called the comedian Drew Carey and he went over with us. And I'm telling you what, it was seven days of, I'll never forget it. And it's something, wow. like I said, supersedes my playing career. Um, uh, seven days of seeing, you know, and I consider myself a big team player. We just talked about being a team player. Those men and women that are over there protecting us, they're, they're the ultimate team players. Make no mistake about it. It's, it's that's incredible. Right. And that's the passion I hear from your family. That's the passion I hear from you when I watch you nightly when you're on Fox or wherever. I can. <laughs> you can't get away from us. Yeah. So, I, you know, I, again, I love the passion. Uh, I hate it that we got a man in office right now that has a hard time reading from a teleprompter. Oh. Always just speak from his heart. Uh, I'm from the mold where you kind of respect the position and, and the presidency. It's He's making it very difficult to do that. Um, uh, you want them to get out there and, and uh, you know, really get after it and support the people that they really know that they're supposed to be supporting. Amen. I mean, that's the way it should be. What an incredible experience, by the way, getting to go over – to awesome. the Middle East, getting to see, you know, our troops that are there on the ground and being around that. I mean, I if I had an opportunity to do that, I would jump at it in a heartbeat. And I echo your sentiments every chance I get. Thank you to our veterans. Thank you to our active duty military. Um, I've had military folks in my family that still do to this day that are active and serving our country. It is because of these folks that we get to live, uh, Roger, in the greatest country on earth. And we're so blessed to do so. I want to talk a little bit about you. Obviously, people people know you. People have uh, known you for basically your whole life. But uh, for people that you know want to know a little bit more about you, obviously, you're talking about you come from a big family. There were six of you growing up. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, I've got uh, my oldest brother since passed away. So I have three sisters and um, and my my brother and I. So there's five of us still going strong and and staying after it. And I'm telling you what. When I had my, when I told my two, my middle sister, my, my oldest sister is living in Missouri. Uh, my other sisters are, are, are closer. And when I told them, hey, we got a Trump rally. You guys want to go to the rally or have an opportunity to meet the president? They, I, they couldn't hang up the phone faster to get to Houston. Wow. Uh, they are, they are uh, supporters uh, through and through. They love nice. our country just like uh, y'all do. And, uh, you know, that's, again, that's, that's who we are, man. I'm mean, telling you, we're, we're, we love it. I'm good friends with Toby Keith, so I loved it that Toby came up for the inauguration. To you're talking about an American. Toby Keith's an American. He did and a great Toby job, too, yeah. yeah. He'll let you know where he stands quick. So Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, family's great. Um, I have the four boys. They're all busy. Um, I'm Poppy Rocket now. I go. Uh, my oldest one, I have uh, five-year-old twin grand boys. Oh, my gosh. So well, great. Oh yeah, I'm Poppy Rocket. I need a, I need a rope. Because <laughs> one goes one way and one goes the other. And oh my gosh. Uh, so Kobe, Kobe played ten years professionally. He's co he's teaching now. Uh, number two uh, in real estate, and he's actually graduated from Le Cordon Bleu in Austin, so he can cook like you read about. Oh, and, you know, I'm a pastry chef, so maybe he and I can team up. That's it. He's he's yeah. It. yeah. So that's wow. Corey Casey is. Uh, Casey's still embarking on his career. He's doing a lot of things, but um, he was last with the Blue Jays. A couple of other teams are looking at him, so he's still got a lot of fire in his belly. So he's still playing. And then the youngest one, Cody, is a second baseman for the Detroit Tigers, and he's on the 40-man. So if they get this basic agreement locked down and, uh, and, and done, he'll uh, be off to spring training pretty soon. Wow. So you have four sons, right? So all boys – you and and then your wife i mean was your wife like ganged up on growing up how was that did she like that because i gotta tell you before my daughter was born it was my husband eric my son luke our two male dogs charlie and ben and i was like can i get any women can i get some girl power going in the house but man your wife is just like hanging well, by herself you're an that you're an athlete so you fit right in she's yeah. the best athlete in the family she's she beats us in golf Wow. Uh, she ran track in high school. She did. She 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 actually, I think, worked for Pennzoil for a little bit. She used to fly out and uh, out on those rigs and look at those rigs. But uh, uh, yeah, you're right. If I'd have tried to have a girl and had a fifth boy, I'd be living with y'all in Florida <laughs> because she would have kicked me right out of the house. But uh, oh my gosh. We, we keep her busy. She loves it. Uh, she gets it. She's obviously seen 
you know, she knows the good side and the bad side when I'm performing well or not performing well, being part, you know, you, you're going to get critiqued and criticized. It is kind of comical. There's all the stuff that it's out there on the, as I'm, again, preaching to the choir with y'all that's on the internet. That, oh, don't you know, we know. It's that, all true too, right, Roger? Oh, Just yeah, look all, up Wikipedia. That, they're okay. the worst of all. Yeah, you go on there. I mean, I wish I had as much fun as uh, they, they put out there, right? Oh, my, so, right? Yeah, so, but. Exactly. Um, we, we, stay, we stay grounded. Uh, we, we get out there and play the part when we need to. And uh, because I wore the uniform for 24 years, I'm still able to uh, help some uh, charities that are close to my heart in the four cities I played in, uh, Boston, New York, Toronto, and here at home in Houston. Uh, so we love it and we're, we stay active. We got these celebrity events we golf in. And uh, so, yeah, just stay, staying good busy. That's, uh, that's the way to do it. But all of your sons played baseball, right? Yeah, they did. All of them played yeah, just about every sport. I always encourage. I play the dad role for the for the dads out there. They have kids playing sports. I play the dad role until they ask me a pointed question. Uh, if they ask me a specific question, then I'll I'll put my uh, game cap on and we'll get really specific about the game. I gonna, yeah, I was going to ask, like, how is that? Did, did they do you feel like they felt pressured knowing who their dad was to to play baseball or was this? I mean, obviously, it's in their blood, but uh, what was that like? Yeah, so they always, it's cool to hear their interviews, and it was it was really cool that I played long enough that, you know, they came back. I played for two of the most rich in history teams with the Red Sox and the Yankees, mm -hmm. and then they would see the black and white of a Babe Ruth or like Lou Gehrig giving his farewell speech there at Yankee Stadium. They're like, Pops, man, you stood right there where that dude was, and I go, yeah, it's pretty cool in the history. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's why I told him if I didn't play professional baseball, I would have been making history somehow, whether I was teaching it or doing something of, of that nature. Because, again, it was in the background that my mother and my grandma, I watched how hard they worked just to, you know, not have the light, the light shut off or electricity yeah. shut off. And uh, so, you know, I tell people, uh, like I released in my statement not too long ago, that I played the first part of my professional career to change a generational family gap that we had. And I knew I had a chance to make a lot of money doing it. After that, after I knew I had my feet uh, in the ground and I had some staying power, uh, it was about winning championships again like we did at the University of Texas. But uh, to go back to your question, too, um, uh, the boys are hitters. I was a pitcher, so it's easy for me to watch them. I tell people, I think if they got on the mound and pitched like a few of them did in high school, I'd have been a little more edgy or nervous because I know that position, how hard it is. When yeah. they're up, when they're up there hitting and and doing their thing, I'm just I'm just like every other fan. I'm rooting them on to to do well. Gosh, I've I've always thought, you know, I've played so many different sports, but I never wanted to be the goalie when I played soccer. I've always thought, you know, in baseball, how stressful must it be to be the pitcher? Those are positions that Roger, I was like. Whoever is doing yeah. these jobs, man, you've got to like really be focused and and be okay with with things getting past you, with you not doing, the, you know, like sometimes you're you're gonna throw balls, sometimes you're gonna miss the soccer ball going, it's going, you know, behind you, and the other team is scoring. I, I mean, those are stressful positions. That's a and yeah. it's a long time you did it. Oh yeah, you can't daydream if you're a goalie. Yeah, no. <laughs> you can't start daydreaming. The next thing you know, they're coming at you. Yeah, I mean, being on center stage um, and, and in the in the box score the next day in the paper, you have the win, the W by your name or the L by your name. But yeah. the, like I tell the, the the guys that come over, we got seven-year-olds to professional guys that come to the house. I have an indoor facility where you can hit and throw and do all your stuff. And we talk about that. When you win, and it, it holds true in anything. When you win, you win. When you lose, you learn. You don't That's so true. And uh, yeah. so I make that a point. I mean, I've I've – you know, 360 something games or whatever, 50 games I won and maybe lost 180 or whatever. But I learned so much. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's disappointing because you want to do well. You train to do well. You train to perform. Uh, when I'm driving to the ballpark, I might see, uh, you know, several different license plates from all over that's coming in on that day to watch you perform. And there's nobody feels worse if you go out and lay an egg uh, than I do. And, yeah. and as a starting pitcher, you got to wait three or four days to go back out there to redeem yourself. But, you know, I had a good run. Like I said, I had some great teammates that paid attention to detail. Again, same, different than uh, president's camp. You know, you got to mm -hmm. pay attention to detail. And 
again, I, I love listening to him talk. I love how, I love how he gets on Twitter and, and backs everybody back off. Uh, back when he was allowed on Twitter. I mean. Right, right, or whatever it was, right? And But, Roger, by the way, you didn't – a lot of people are fans of, of my father-in-law, but they don't tell anybody. You know, they're like, well, I know what will happen if I speak out and say that I support Donald Trump, which obviously half the country, I would say now probably more than half the country at this point probably does – but you've been really open about it. And yeah. I, I mean, why did you why did you decide to do that? Because a lot of people would have just been like, you know, what, I'll just kind of lay back and stay low key about this. No, I knew him before he was president. So I, I knew the the makeup and character, what he was going to come in with. And when he and just like anything, hey, I, ha I have the same birthday as Obama. Uh, oh, we have sure. the same birthday, right? I didn't vote for the man. But once he got in, my deal was, all right, go get something done. Yes. By the way, the. I think so many people have the same feeling. I, whoever the president of the United States is, it, whether or not I voted for that person, I want that person to be successful because if they are successful, then America is successful. It gives me no pleasure to go on TV, you know, every day of the week and just knock the guy that's in the White House. The problem is he really is just doing such a poor job at things that I feel like you know, it's kind of warranted at a certain point, but I agree with you. I think so many people feel that way. Like maybe you didn't vote for this person. Maybe they don't align their values directly with yours, but you want them to do a good job. And sadly, he, a lot of people have felt differently when my father-in-law was in office. They wanted him to fail, even if it meant that America failed. Uh, lucky for us, that wasn't the case. Lucky for us, he did an incredible job. Um, Fortunately, but I think you're right. I think that that's the way to go. You want people to succeed because it means America wins, you know. And, and like you said, you can look, you can look at the all the people that want to be negative, but there was so many more that were in his court, and and he and he did so well. But you're right. I, you, re, I, re, you know, being an American, I respect the position. Now go get something done, and, yeah. and make it make it for us. Make America first. Do it for us first. Then once we get our house in order, we can go out and help these other people or we can back off some of these other leaders that might bring a little tension to us. I mean, uh, your father in law did that. He went over and shook hands mm -hmm. with people that we're normally not supposed to shake hands with. And uh, so um, it's like we did in the, in the game. When I when I see different guys from opposing teams out at the same dinner spot, I'm going to say hello to them. But they know tomorrow yeah. I'm going to try and beat their brains in. <laughs> uh, on the field and that's i mean i wouldn't think they would want any, any other way and they're trying to do the same you right. know, to me so um right. yeah I, I i get it i like i said i root for the guys but uh they're making it real difficult hey the only other thing i'm going to tell you is when biden got in all he had to do in the first two weeks is say that hey Thank you, President Trump, for doing this vaccine. It's great. He's been great at doing it. You know how many other people, whether you wanted to take it or did not want to take it, how many would have done it? Right. Just because he supported all. If, that's all he had to say. So, you know, President so Trump, many issues, so many mistakes, Roger. I mean, if you, could, if you could write a book on what you shouldn't do, basically Joe Biden has it written. It's done. Like first year in office, what you should not do as president Here's here's your guide. Just just take a view of the past 370 whatever days we're at now since he's been in office. But um, uh, look, we got three more years to go. Let's hope there's a country left. We'll see what happens. We'll see who's on the ticket going into 2024. Um, but, you know, you're in Texas. I've been in Texas. I was in Texas a couple of weeks ago. The interesting thing with Texas, it's the same thing that's happening here in Florida, there are a lot of people from California moving to Texas right now. A lot of people from the Northeast moving to Florida, doing the same thing that I did. Now, that's fine. I'm great with you coming to Florida, but don't come to our state, this open, beautiful, free state, and bring your politics that ruined your state and forced you to move to my state now down here. What's your feeling on Texas? How do you feel things are going there? You don't have to say anymore. We just sold our condo in Austin. And when we put it up uh, about five months ago, the first two months, the only people that came to look at it was California, Chicago, yeah. New York. And yep. I was like, wow, this is this is getting interesting, to say the least. So, um, again, I've got I've got friends in California that love Trump. And mm -hmm. 
Uh, and then I've got the other, the other ones that went the other way and we, we won't get too deep in it. They know where I stand. And, uh, you know, I could be hateful towards the president, but I'm not like we just talked about. I want him to do well, but yeah. they're making it very difficult. I mean, again, I would love for the vice president at least to come down here and the borders look. are come on down to the border. That's please. It. That's all you got to do. And, and, <laughs> and actually hang out for just, you know, an hour. And, yeah. uh, and because it's a, it's an issue. And uh, I know our, our politicians down here are trying to uh, work a, their way around it, but uh, it's, uh, it's definitely a problem. No, for sure. So let me, let me back up with you for a minute because you talked about your mom, you talked about your grandmother, you talked about the fact that they instilled the work ethic that ultimately led you to be you know, such a legendary pitcher and baseball player. But if you hadn't been able to throw the 100 mile an hour fastballs, Roger, where would you be right now? What do you think you would have done? Was there some other job that you thought like you might be good at or you were interested in? I, I think it would have been definitely something um, uh, in the community. Um, they've asked me to run uh, for office down here in a couple of different oh. positions. Yeah. Uh, I always told them I thought the climate was a little too uh, iffy, um, as you guys did. You got to have thick skin to, to, to be, yeah. in, be in this business. You have, have thick do. You have to have thick skin to walk into an opposing ballpark in front of 60,000, too. Yeah, but, by the way, you're kind of set up for it. I don't want to push you one way or another, but I got to tell you, athletes, professional athletes, you guys have to deal with that all the time. So just saying, you might be okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm pretty sure I can handle it. And uh, you wouldn't believe what I thought my nickname. My nickname's The Rocket, but I, I, I've been called in visiting ballparks a lot of names where I've almost answered to them, so some vulgarity, but <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm and, sure you uh, have. Oh, yeah. So, uh, but I, I would have done something with probably history. Um, no doubt. And, oh, interesting. Uh, as I became successful, I would have done something with underprivileged kids. Uh, again, I was one of them. I, I watched my mom, you know, uh, just work her tail off. So I thought we were rich, you know. And, of course, being the young boy, my sisters had to sacrifice a lot so I could uh, go do that. And then I was drafted out of high, uh, high school or jun junior college. And then uh, my mother wanted me to go to Texas to get my education, further my education there in the business school. I know. I love that about about you. A lot of people. What is your thought on that? Because I love it when and I get it. I get you that you could get injured and then your professional career could be over. But so smart to finish school, to have a degree of some variety. Obviously, that that must be why you did it. Right. So you could back then and um, uh, I beat Alabama for the national championship in 1983. And then I got drafted, went to Boston. And the season would go all the way to October. So our business finance dean, you couldn't take any on. We could take a few online courses, and we did that. We set up a program in Boston for the the, the basketball team, hockey team, all, all the professional teams of guys that could, you know, get a few more hours in, if mm -hmm. you will, uh, uh, online or whatever it was. Uh, and then they stopped doing that. And then, of course, if you make the 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 playoffs and go to the championship season, that runs all the way through October. Right. So it's it's too late to do so. So um, it, it was a great experience for me. Um, I told both my younger boys, I love it that they're playing ball and they're excited, you know, they're chasing their profession. But I, I love it even more that they graduated with honors. Uh, 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 they came out of the McCombs Business School. I think you guys were uh, talking to Casey a little bit. My son Casey setting this up. And uh, but yeah, I mean, it's your background. You know, it's, it's how you were brought up and uh, what you what your foundation is. And we stick to that. Our feet still in the ground. Uh, you know, I still get looks going to pump my gas. You know, I'll be at the gas station filling my truck up and uh, people are like staring at me. And I'm like, well, yeah, I, I actually pump my own gas. Yeah. yeah. Shocker. <laughs> I, I go to the grocery store myself. I'll probably go after we do this interview. Shocking. <laughs> I know. We got to get stuff done. Right, Roger? Like, Absolutely. Total, everybody, same thing. Um, I, I want to ask you, though, because you, you talked about your foundation, the Rob, Roger Clemens Foundation. Yeah. Um, you obviously are helping children, and it's a real passion of yours. You've had it since 1992, I believe. So tell me about that, why you started it, what it means to you, and, and essentially who you help. Yeah, so Deb and I started it together. Uh, there's been a couple times where I thought I had a nice run and I would shut it down, but Deb said, no, we're going to continue to do this. This is too good. Uh, we had a children's wing over at Memorial Hermann. Uh, we redid the inside of it with really bright colors for the, 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 the hundreds of thousands of families that come down with their kids. 
and and they get to see uh, the different wings that we put together for them. I oh, think great. it's a really relaxed, great environment. Um, uh, we've gone outside the box. We've helped a couple families bury their loved one that couldn't afford it. You know, I get some, I get about 25 letters a week on my desk that pull at your heartstrings. Yeah. And uh, so some, some of the things we've gone outside the box, but again, the cool things that I'm doing now, I told everybody, I'm kind of tired of the sit down dinners where you get the cold piece of chicken, uncooked piece of steak, and you buy an auction item that you never get to go on. So I've been doing these golf outings, these golf experiences, uh, uh, or BP off the Rocket Man, where I throw BP for an hour. Um, we had the Super Bowl here in Houston a couple years ago, but they have big events, and some of the corporation guys will come here to Houston, actually. They'll bring 12 guys. Uh, last year, a gentleman, a businessman, said, can I bring my 14-year-old kid's baseball team? I said, sure. And their day is such, they, they fly in the night before, stay in a hotel, they get up the next morning. They meet at my house in my indoor cage at 11 a.m. From 11 to noon, I throw an hour worth of BP to them. Uh, slow batting practice, nothing fast. Uh, so, <laughs> you, you know, I don't want to hit anybody and have them have to use some ice. No. But it, uh, if it's grown-ups, we feed them Mexican food and margaritas. If it's the kids, we give them James Coney Island and Powerade. And uh, then they, they go upstairs and take pictures with some of my Cy Young Awards send them back to the hotel to rest, and then they picked out a game during the year that the Astros are at home. Maybe they're playing the Yankees, their favorite team, and they come to my buddy's suite, and we feed them there, and that's a great package. Sometimes wow. it, gets, it gets up there. The Red Sox, we do one for the Jimmy Fund in Boston that's really cool. You'll like this one. Is um, In game, when the Red Sox are on the road, they usually auction me off between the second and sixth inning of the game for batting practice at Fenway Park. So you oh, actually wow. – you actually, you know, you're a grown man, you're and, and you got eleven of your buddies, and you get to stand in the dirt at Fenway Park and try and hit a ball over the green monster. Oh, cool! Uh, and it's it's a great, and I love it still. And uh, the golf outings are great too because I spend four hours. Uh, again, I can't wait to get down your way and, and golf with yeah. you. Yeah. And uh, we've we've played on the same course together, but he was in another group, so. I told him. I think I think you'll be impressed with him. His golf game has really improved since he's had a little more time in the past a, year. Yeah, I've seen a few uh, clips lately. Yeah, he's really uh, he's really you know dialing it in. He's pretty good. Well, I got to say, I, I think it's really cool that you do um, all of these things for charity, Roger. Because honestly, you know, you don't have to. There are there are a lot of people that are in your shoes who, you know, have been professional athletes who've made their fortune and they don't have to work anymore and they're all sad and they're you know just going to ride off into the sunset but the fact that you do these things you give back you stay involved i think it's really great um i'm sure you make such a difference in so many people's lives and i, I think it's it's awesome to see i hope you inspire more people to do that um and before we let you go i gotta ask you i ask most people that come on the show this question what do you think is the best part of america and what do you think is the biggest threat to the future of our country um the best part of america just um so what came to mind when you asked that was i i kind of took the negativity of the COVID outbreak back in 2020 i guess it was what was really cool was when they had everybody kind of locked down in my neighborhood and i've i know most of my neighbors but not maybe extended neighbors don't see them very much but i got out and we all started everybody started getting outdoor and walking and i actually got to yeah. see so many people in my half mile radius of my house that I didn't know, they knew where I lived, of course, but it was like going back to uh, Mayberry, you know, or one of these, yeah. old, you know, Andy Griffin shows. Everybody was talk, stopped and talked and oh, cool. waved to you and rolled their window down. And it was like, we, we went back in time. Yeah. And, well, I, I took the good from that. I actually ended up watching, what do we watch? I, I think I watched Shit's Creek. I've never sat down. Oh, great show. I've never sat down and done that. So I, I will always look for the, uh, the positive part of that. Uh, and, and that's what I think is what's great about America. I wish we'd get back to it. I, uh, the mass now, now, now we're losing the kids and you know, uh. they can't even, they can't even see it to, to see if you're smiling or, or glaring at them. But, uh, so bad. uh, there's, you know, other than the worst part of America is the, the politics, how they just want to bury you on one side or the other, you know, where they go at each other instead of coming. They, they know some of these areas are easily uh, common ground. Right. And uh, 
you know, to, to see Biden go on day one, sign all these, you know, to, to change everything that President Trump had done just because President Trump did it. Right. And again, I can't say it easier or, or, or better. And I've told anybody that I get talking when we're talking politics is that if Biden was on target and knew what he was doing, that's all he had to say about the vaccine is that thank you, Donald Trump, for all the work you did on this. He's put it out there, people. Rock and roll if you want to get it. If you don't, don't. But at least President Trump put it. And there would have been so many more people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It would have been. Totally. It, it would have rolled. It would have rolled yeah. perfectly. But he, he didn't. Yeah. The second you start um, forcing Americans to do things, there's a bit of a red flag that goes up for a lot of people. And they say, wait a minute. Wow. This is not what America is about. We have never used force force to make anything happen. It's all about our own choice and our own decisions. That is ultimately why this country was founded. But I love what you said about COVID, about, I mean, truly the people in America, our people, I think are the greatest part of America. Our people are innovators. Our people are entrepreneurs. Our people have changed the world. We were the first to send a, a human being to the moon. I mean, the incredible things that have come out of our country cannot be overstated. And um, I think COVID g did give us an opportunity, at least in the beginning. You know, we had the 15 days to slow the spread, Roger. The worst part of the first the 15 days is the, like the first two years. Everybody knows that. But truly, it, it did give us all an opportunity to kind of slow down, take a pause, reflect on your neighborhood, people you didn't even know were there, get to spend time with our families because everybody runs at such a high pace, I feel like, these days. And so there was something really beautiful to come out of that and remind us about the things that are ultimately important um, in our lives and, and in our country. So I love that. That's a really you know insightful way to look at what a lot of people saw as a really awful time. But I think there was a lot of really positive stuff you could probably take from COVID. And by the way, the number of people that figured out that they could spend more time with their families, still get their jobs done, et cetera, Maybe that was a positive to come out of it as well. Um, but look, keep doing the great stuff that you're doing. Uh, you're obviously still continuing to make such an impact in the country. And um, just think it's really awesome that you are, are continuing to stay so involved and do such positive work. And um, we appreciate you coming on the show today, Roger. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for asking me, Anna. I appreciate it. And you're spot on with the, you know, that beginning part of COVID. That was yeah. good. And that's exactly how we felt. Yeah, it's so true. We, we always have to remember that. You always got to see the silver lining in things, I feel like. And certainly that, that was a silver lining for that one. So, Roger Clemens, thanks for joining us on The Right View. Keep up the great work. Uh, to everybody at home, as always, thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here next time for more of The Right View.